how do you hold your breath longer? Today, we're going to show you some quick tips to point you in the right direction for beginners. These tips should only be done dry on a couch and not in the water until you've taken a proper free diving course due to the risk of blacking out and drowning. Today, we're gonna to focus on static apnea, which is holding your breath for a longer period of time. Tip number one, dedicate 15 to 30 minutes of time out of your day to focus on your breath hold. Tip number two, find a quiet room and a comfy couch that you can lay on. Tip number three, make sure that you get a timing device like a dive watch or a normal stopwatch or an app on your phone to be able to uh, time your breath holds. Tip number four, eliminate as much distractions as you can. So make sure that your phone is on do not disturb, on silent, or have it in another room. Tip number five, focus on physical relaxation. Use pillows to help support your back and your knee. Like this. Once you're in position, ensure that you don't have tension on your neck, shoulders, or lower back, which is typically where people find problems relaxing. Once you begin your breath hold, maintain your physical relaxation by not moving your muscles, which includes not always constantly looking at your time or fidgeting because any little movement wastes some of your oxygen. Tip number six, mental relaxation. When you start your breath hold, you want to focus on the current moment, the present state. So don't think about the laundry, what you're gonna eat, your exams that you're studying for, or your busy day at work. Here are some techniques to help you do that. Some people like to have absolutely nothing in their mind, and if a thought comes in, they kick it out. That's my husband's personal favorite, and I guess it's because there's not much going on in there anyways. Other people like to sing a song or count numbers, and that's my personal favorite. While other people like to visualize their favorite vacation destination or walking through their happy place, or they like to think about they're floating in the clouds or in the middle of the ocean. Another technique that people like to use is focusing on the sound that's like the farthest in the room, a fridge humming, or the nearest sound in the room, like a fan that's nearby. And then they alternate between the farthest sound and the nearest sound to keep mentally relaxed. Each tip that we shared for mental relaxation might work for one freediver and might throw off another freediver. So what works for your buddy might not work for you. Go and explore, try it out. Let us know in the comments below what works for you. Tip number seven, time updates. Some people like to hear time updates while others do not. You can use a freediving app, a stopwatch, or your freediving buddy like this. This okay. is a freediving training app, so you can focus on your breath hold and not have to worry about the time. Five, four, three, two, one. Some people, they don't like to hear time updates because it throws them off. When they hear a particular time, they compare how they felt uh, when they did a previous breath hold and then it throws them off. So try it out, see what works best for you. Tip number eight, don't hold your breath on a full stomach. It's actually best to do your breath hold before breakfast, but if you had a large meal, wait around three hours before you start your breath hold session. And bonus tip, don't forget to go to the bathroom before you start your breath hold session. <laughs> tip number nine, take a full breath. Fill up your lungs from the bottom all the way to the top, like this. If you feel too much tension in your chest, then fill up your lungs from 80 to 90% as opposed to 100% because the key to your breath hold is relaxation. Tip number 10, don't let air out. A lot of beginners exhale large amounts of air when they feel discomfort. The only time where you're allowed to is just a little bit of air in case if you feel discomfort from overfilling your lungs as we covered in tip number nine. This is important because the air that you let out still contains oxygen that allows you to hold your breath even longer. Tip number 11 is to use training tables. So conventional CO2 and O2 tables that you can uh, build on a typical freediving training app are really good because they give you a lot of breath holds um, and they're not too difficult so you don't lose motivation. Okay, so this is a conventional CO2 table tailored for a beginner with a target breath hold of about two minutes. So you can see that the breath hold times in this column, they remain consistent, but then your breathing time in this column, it gets reduced steadily throughout the table. So each breath hold is gonna be more and more and more challenging with the goal of 
having CO2 exposure throughout the table. This is an example of a conventional O2 table for a beginner with a target breath hold of two minutes. So in this column is the breath hold times and you can see that the beginning one is roughly half of the target and the end one is about 80% of the target breath holds. So throughout the table, we have longer and longer breath holds, but our relaxation time or breathing time is consistent at about two minutes, which is plenty of time to replenish all of your oxygen, get rid of all your CO2 and start fresh for your next breath hold in the table. So tip number 12 is to use a warm up table at a beginner level to go for a maximum breath hold attempt. So in this column, we have our breath holds leading up. We have three breath holds leading up to the maximum attempt, and we have lots of breathing in between um, with a full three minutes of breathing before our maximum attempt of two minutes. So using a warm-up table is a great way to just get your mind and body ready and focused for your maximum attempt without uh, having too many breath holds that you're already too tired for that maximum. So tip number 13 is to train consistently and to not give up. So at a beginner level, I'd recommend training uh, once or twice a week on your couch, that's totally fine. Uh, and you might see some slow progress at first, which don't let that discourage you because once you start seeing results, you'll be really pumped up to train. Tip number 14 would be to have a training baby with you or a training buddy uh, that can help you stay motivated and on track with your training plan. And you can keep each other accountable and uh, improve and have a healthy competition going. Tip number 15, don't brace yourself throughout contractions. So contractions will start maybe around a minute or a minute 30 for most beginners. And they're basically the involuntary movement of your respiratory muscles. In this clip, you can see what contractions actually look like. When they start, you actually aren't even halfway through your breath hold for most people. So don't be freaked out by them. And remember to focus on the tips number five and six around physical and mental relaxation. I like to just close my eyes and try to keep my body as loose as possible by letting the contractions flow through. Many of these tips should be able to help you get going, but the best thing to do is to take a freediving course from a reputable instructor. There's some good agencies out there like Mulchnovs or Ada, and you can find a good instructor there that can really get you going.